this dark, bleak message. Well, you know what? For a lot of people, the country is dark and bleak. I, I, we're in New York yesterday with my wife, and every darn thing, lotion, everything you could think of, locked up behind doors, or someone has to come of deodorant. And, and that's normal in America. And so when people say, well, crime is not a problem, these things are locked up because theft. So, so crime is a problem so in this country are very accurate for a whole lot of regular people out there. That's why he got the support yeah. he received. Yeah. So, Scott, let me ask you a question because mm -hmm. we, we started talking about, okay, this is what's important for people to focus on in the second mm -hmm. Trump administration. Ron raised the question, okay, is Donald Trump going to do some of these things that he alienates some of those voters, right, who... They voted for him anyway, even though they think he's too extreme because they're upset about this. This show in the future and that Republicans will have to work, right, to hold on to this, right? They'll have to govern in a way uh, that can t if you want mandate together in the next election. Does Donald Trump care about, like, what Republicans are going to want to try to keep that in power going forward, considering that this Is he going to be thinking about that as he governs the country? I mean, I, I think he's only going to care about what the people who just elected him. It's a mandate. I mean, the economic program, the immigration program, the foreign policy program, I mean, everything he laid what Donald Trump did as president, and, and certainly everybody heard loud and clear what he was running on in this yeah. election, and he won a resounding victory. Mm -hmm. So political advice would be, just do what you said you were going to do, and you're going to have a very successful term because that's what the people asked for. We got what we deserve. Today, leaders who succeeded in beating back some of Donald Trump's most controversial first-term plans are warnings now here. As Trump takes his first post-election steps on immigration, elevating hardliners while plotting rotations. Today, NBC News learning that Stephen Miller, the architect of the notorious family separation policy, is expected to be named for policy. Trump also tapping as borders are Tom Homan, who has touted workplace raids and marshals known for echoing Trump's language demonizing immigrants while implementing his plans. On day one, my terminate every open border policy of the Biden administration. We begin the largest domestic deportation operation. One of the biggest deportation operations this country's ever seen. America is for Americans and Americans only. They're poisoning the blood of our country. Story, if you come back, you will be executed. You will be killed immediately. Not going to be easy, but we'll do it. Deportation without separating families? Of course there is. Families can be deported together. So this is now more than just rhetoric. As the Washington Post reports, Trump's win puts militarized mass... The Wall Street Journal noting Trump advisors are now drawing up plans for the deportation push, including weighing a national emergency Trump to repurpose military assets to detain and remove migrants. Several Democratic governors saying that they're going to have his draconian policies, including immigration. Massachusetts Governor Mara Healey becoming the first to state will not cooperate with mass deportations. And immigration lawyers are getting ready for battle. That includes the ace Trump over family separations and his travel ban. The group now sending an open letter to Trump, vowing to defend people's rights legislatures and in the streets. There's a lot happening today, including renewed threats from Trump to abolish the Department of Education ally Lee Zeldin to run the EPA. And Trump naming GOP Congresswoman Elise Stefanik to be to the United Nations. But we're going to start tonight with the fast-developing fight over immigration. Joining me now is National Legal Director and Fernando Mondi, political strategist and an MSNBC political analyst. My thanks to both of you. Cecilia Trump, you got Tom Homan and Stephen Miller. They are the epitome of that idea that the cruelty is the point. Your thoughts on how... So, Katie, absolutely, um, with the appointment of Tom Homan and Stephen Miller... Trump is starting to launch his attacks in the United States and people who are at the border are seeking a fair chance to apply for asylum. Trump is really announcing that he's going to be attacking a in the country. Uh, Miller and Homan are both right-wing extremists. It's clear that with their announcement only separation, these are the architects of the Muslim ban. These are not policies that the majority of Americans want, uh, fair and secure. Uh, processing of people at the border. This is really, as you heard from Trump himself, um, an attack on the United States. When they say they're going to launch a, the largest domestic deportation force in history, 
We have seen the administration, but when local sheriffs like Joe Arpaio, former sheriff in mm. Maricopa County, Arizona, or police forces decided they wanted to go after immigrants in U.S. communities, you see door-to-door -door raids with U.S. citizen children, status families also taking the brunt. Um, we fought uh, this before and we'll fight it again. Donald Trump has announced with the um, door to door, he's going to go into our workplaces as Americans and he's going to launch an attack. Well, where he goes. You know, Fernand, uh, I, I have a lot of respect for Cecilia. I think, Cecilia, you are one of the most brilliant people that, because you said this is not what a majority of Americans want. But, Fernand, a majority of Americans voted this in. When we played that sound, that wasn't me saying it. That was Donald Trump and Tom Homan. That was Stephen Miller. Those are their own words. So, this is exactly what a majority of Americans are asking for. It is indeed, Katie, and this is why so many of us were sounding the alarm, really since the moment it became clear that Donald Trump was going to seek the Republican nomination again and inevitably became the nominee. Now going to be living a living nightmare here in this country. And let's not pretend or not um, or happening before our eyes. The immigrants are the first step. The, the idea here is to go after this group, the most vulnerable, to create this military that will now have access to every sector of the United States. And they'll start with deporting undocumented immigrants without any concerns of me or the local communities or the fear and even the, the violence and death that is going to come and result from that. But it's also a pretext. You will not be out of line. Anything you do that is against the wills of this Trump state will have these kind of punitive damages. You heard Trump himself in that clip. If you come back, we will execute you and we won't think twice about it. Uh, right now, it has also set off a tremendous sense. I think you're going to be seeing over these next two months before Donald Trump uh, is sworn in as the next president, a movement all across the country to go to these sanctuary states sanctuary areas to try and seek some sort of respite, which will cause uh, an issue of its own. Dark time, there's no sugarcoating this. I think, as Cecilia says, we have to be vigilant. We have to come together as Americans and do what we can. But this is of an election that had the worst and most dire consequences. CNN political director David Chalian is over at the Magic Wall for us to break down which states Trump and Harris need to win. Wolf, here it is. The path to 270, the red states are in Trump's column, the blue states are in Harris's column for the seven remaining yellow toss-up battleground states. And as you know, those battleground states are razor thin. Battleground states, no clear leader in any of them, in any of these battleground states. So this is razor thin. So what is the path to victory? Harris campaign will say that their best, most direct path to 270 electoral votes is through the blue wall. If she were to win Pennsylvania, she'd be at 270 electoral votes and the next president. But what if Donald Trump repeats his 2016 victory in Pennsylvania? 51, and she has to go hunting in the Sun Belt uh, to find some more votes. Certainly, if she were able to flip North Carolina from red to blue, the door to 270, and then maybe Nevada behaves like it has for Democrats in recent cycles, and that would put Harris over the top of Trump's path. Well, let's reset the map. Seven yellow battleground states, and Donald Trump's most direct path is to a state he won by the narrowest margin four years ago. In fact, it's the only state he won of the seven battleground states. And let's say he flips Georgia by just fewer than 12,000 votes. So let's say that ends up back in his column. And let's say he does get that Pennsylvania victory repeated from... He'll be at 270 electoral votes. He doesn't need any of the rest of the battleground states. But what if Harris does pull it out in Pennsylvania? Trump go for the next 19 electoral votes. Well, even if he were to win Nevada and Arizona would not get him to 270. He would need at least one of the other remaining so-called blue wall states, such as Michigan, over the top at 283. Let's go to John King. He's at the magic wall. You know, and, and John, you know, it's those individual groups, whether you're talking about Arab of Michigan or Jewish voters or Puerto Rican voters in Pennsylvania, uh, you know, everyone's talking about such specific groups because we keep hearing about how this is one of the tightest races. Really the case, how do you see it two days out? 
The data tell us it is the closest race in the 10. This is my 10th presidential election, and there's never been. But they do sometimes break late. So you should prepare yourself for any possibility of outcomes. A, a split back and forth between the states. Or you could prepare yourself and runs up most of the battleground states. Either one of those scenarios, a sort of a split decision, a boxing match, or somebody s sweeping most of them is possible. So I say that. Let's start in the blue wall states, right? Look at these. Forgive me for turning my back. I just want to stretch this out a little bit so people can see it more clearly at home. This is the CNN poll of poll. There are some hints of maybe a little bit of Harris momentum in there. The Sunday before the election, I always lapse back into caution mode, right? Let's be careful. Let's let people vote. Let's be responsible. Average of the polls, that's the safest way to do it. 49-46 in Wisconsin. So you could say Harris is a lead. That's so close. It's, you know, that's a six in Michigan. 48-48, actual, an actual tie in, of course, Battleground, Pennsylvania. So let me just shrink this down and take it off to the side of this one. So that's the blue wall states. What about the Sunbelt states, right? So forgive me again. I just want to stretch it out. North Carolina, Trump with a one-point edge. That's the same thing. Trump 49, Harris 47. So the Trump campaign say we're ahead a little bit, I would say. Then that means who turns out is going to affect that. He has had a tiny lead in Arizona, small lead in Arizona, 49-47. Again, uh, certainly advantage Trump by the numbers, but within reach for the vice president. You know, when you look at all this, and, and you talk about how it could, you know, late break either way or something very close mm -hmm. is very close in every state, but sort of all, I mean, how does all this play out, John? when you look at the path to 270. So let's take this literally, as in, let's assume on the Sunday before, right? Mm. So you have Harris gets Wisconsin, Harris gets Michigan, Pennsylvania's an actual tie, right? Donald scenario, there we go, make it red. Donald Trump will get Georgia in that scenario, make it red. Donald Trump gets...